Well, if you're going to look at an antenna that's designed to be used outdoors, why not be outdoors? Let's check out the JPC-12. As you can see, I'm at one of my favorite campsites, and one of the things I like to do when I'm at my campsites to avoid the hot temperatures in the Phoenix area is to bring along some radio gear. And of course, that means an antenna if you're going to be doing anything in the HF band. So today we're going to take a look at the JPC-12. This has been around a while. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on AliExpress. And it's a vertical antenna with a coil. And you spread out a couple of radials. And all in all, it turns out to be a pretty nice antenna. I've got similar ones, and so I'm anxious to test this one out to see how it does. So let's change the camera a little bit and take a look at what comes in this really nifty travel bag. So here's a closer look at what comes in the bag. First, there's an owner's manual. This is for the JPC-12. On the other side, it's the JPC-7. So they've kind of combined them both. It's printed in color, and it's got all of the, the stuff that you're you know, used to seeing here, uh, along with some uh, English and uh, Chinese verbiage. How to set it up is listed right here. And so uh, it's pretty good in terms of an owner's manual. Now the antenna comes with a couple of things. First we'll look at is the ground spike. And of course it goes into the ground and so you need a spike. And so this will go in to the ground. And then on top of the ground spike is the connector. And this is really um, pretty firm, solid. It's got some texture down here, the SO239. And then the rest of the antenna is going to start stacking on top of this. And it's labeled, as you see here, as the JPC-12. And this goes together just like this. Now, one of the things that we'll be doing before we put these together for the final time is to use these um, radials. And it's just some ribbon cable. They're all bundled together against this ring. And the ring will go in between the ground spike and this uh, main connector down here. And so we'll be pulling these apart. I'll probably take these apart in groups of two uh, to lay out here on the ground around where I'm going to set up my antenna. The next thing we have, of course, is the expandable or extensible part of the antenna. This is about six and a half meters, so about eight feet long, and it comes out. And on much of the tuning that we're going to be doing here with this uh, antenna is going to be by changing the length of these uh, parts of the antenna so that uh, we can tune it into the area that we're really looking for. And then, of course, the next thing we have is we have four of these aluminum rods. And these rods come out, they're only about, you know, a foot long and they screw into each other. And so when we put our antenna together, we'll have the ground spike, the radial ring, then we'll have this main connector, and then we'll put all four of these rods in, and then we'll put the coil in on top of that, and then the, the expandable part of our antenna we'll put in right here. Now for all of the bands that this work, and this work will work with 40, 20, 15, 10, and I think you can get it down to 6. But when you get down below like 15, this is going to come out of the circuit. So we're going to use this on 40, and we're going to use this on 20. Now the instructions will tell you to put this at the red mark. And you can see here on this one, I have it on the red mark. And then over here, there's another one. Now, if you read carefully, it's going to say the red and silver for, I believe that's 40 meters, and the red and gold at 20 meters. So that's the one down here. And I may have that backwards, but um, you'll be looking for the red mark, and then you'll be using this little slider right here to move it. And make sure you get the little uh, pointy part of this slider on the coil that's marked in red, either silver or gold as the instructions tell you to do. So that's the, the coil and, and that's the parts here for the kit. Now all of these things are really nicely done. They're firm and strong. There's a lot of um, friction here on the extensible antenna. As I mentioned before, the connector piece is nice and firm and heavy. And so all of this should work pretty together. And then, of course, it comes in a really nice traveling case so that you can pop this either in another backpack or box or, you know, strap it on the side of your backpack if you're a little more adventurous when you're outside doing mobile operations. So at this point, I'm going to 
take the antenna over where I'm going to put it up, strip my wires to get the radials, and uh, do a little bit of tuning, and we'll come back and talk a little bit about that. Okay, so here we can see that I've got this in. It's got a little bit of an angle to it. I used a nail in the hard desert soil up here in northern Arizona, uh, as opposed to banging on that ground spike. And so it's got a bit of an angle, but you can see that the coax is in. The longest part of putting this all together was uh, stripping the ribbon wire part. And you can see that I've got uh, four of them here uh, stripped out and laying on the ground. They're about 16 feet long or so. And then you can see that the uh, major part of the connector is right there. We go up, we go into those aluminum poles. Then here is our coil, and the coil is on the gold. So for 20 meters, which is what I'm looking for here, it's on the gold. And then I extended the whip out all the way, and it goes up. And then I brought it down maybe 10 centimeters, because at 14,200, the SWR, when I checked it, was about uh, 1.5, which is reasonable, especially if you're kind of in a hurry. And so when I was able to do that, uh, I went back and took it down to about 1.3, which is a little less than what the instructions say to expect. But with these kind of antennas, the goal is to uh, get it tuned down to what you what you find acceptable, and then just go for that. So all in all, this went together really easily, and I was really impressed with the uh, SWR that I got here on 20 meters. Well, I've got my ASU FT891 hooked up to the antenna, and this weekend is the museum ships on the air, and I just made a contact here with uh, the USS Lucid. It's in Stockton, California. So I'm going to play a little HF here and uh, see if I can track down any of the others of these museum ships. Here's a little bit of what that sounds like. All right, yeah, thanks very much for that in uh, 73, and uh, enjoy the weekend. QRZ, this is the USS Lucid, November 6, Mike Sierra Oscar. Kilo 8, Mike Papa. Okay, something Mike Papa, Mike Papa. Well, it's been a couple hours here this afternoon. The uh, museum ships was kind of fun. I was able to listen in on about six or eight as I searched around through the bands and uh, was able to make contact with a couple. You had to be a little bit patient as there were a lot of people participating in that activity. And then as the afternoon started to wear on, the band kind of closed up. So we'll try again tomorrow with some other things with this new little antenna. But all in all, it's really pretty cool. The carrying case, the build quality of the antenna, the ease of setup, and the fact that I was able to reach out all over the United States from here in northern Arizona uh, really made this a really good portable antenna. I got good signal reports from most of the places, and the ones that uh, were kind of far away uh, was still able to finish the contact. So all in all, the JPC-12 would be something you should consider, especially if you're thinking about parks on the air or just a little bit of campsite ham radio and you don't happen to have a portable antenna yet. This would be one to think about. At about $140 or so, it's available, as I think I've said already, on Amazon and on AliExpress, and it's certainly uh, worth the money, in, in my opinion. This was one that I bought myself. I'm glad I did, and it's going to find its way with me to the campsite each time I go camping this summer. As always, if you found the video helpful, please press the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the channel. Join me over here for a video on the Go Box that you saw me operating from and from the battery box that I used to power it. As always, thanks for watching and 73.